now I want to make a weird question to you because like everybody in, um, in open source tells you that you should contribute to open source to give back to the community to, because for example, you use so much open source projects, uh, both in your personal life and at work, right? You, you do your job thanks also to many open source libraries, but let's say that you don't care about any of that. So let's say that you are a selfish person. Why a selfish person person should contribute to open source in your opinion? That's a good question. So let's say you're someone who is who don't who doesn't care about the community, doesn't care if you know contributing to open source is good and in any way. So let's say that someone like this exists. I hope it's not, but um let's assume that um so from that perspective i think solely for the purpose of learning something and having fun is enough to contribute to open source because when you do that you get some feedback and review from people that uh, will improve your programming skills and improve something about you so that's that's a plus uh, maybe um, there's this issue that you worked on, you wrote some code, you write this function, and you created a PR, and someone else will come and say that you can just simplify this like this, and now you learn something. So that's I think that's very valuable, because um, having the view of some uh, other people is very important to... Um, improve what you already know uh, and that's uh, that's that's why a selfish person uh, should just go and contribute and also it's fun you know um, the projects and, and the i mean contributing to something that you personally use is especially fun because you see the effect directly uh, let's say you have you using this tool and you needed to do something specific, but you realized it's not, this feature is not there. You just go there and contribute and you you now have this feature and you built it. I mean, it's a very, very good satisfaction. It makes you happy. And uh, now you added something to this tool. I think a so selfish person would definitely do that because I mean, it's for themselves, right? They need this feature, they go there, contribute and they now have this feature. So, yeah, uh, that's, that's what I would say. Absolutely, yeah, I agree. Also, like imagine that you want to uh, get your code reviewed by someone else, especially someone that is an expert in your field. Like you, you need to find it, you need to pay it. Instead, uh, if you find a, a library that you use at work, for example, and you add the feature, you sub, you solve, you fix an issue. First of all, you you know more about that library, and so you are more effective at your daily job. And also, uh, the person who is maintaining that library will review your code, so it's going to say, okay, this part you can make it better. So it will teach you also something while doing the the review. So the learning is definitely. Uh, one of the reasons to contribute to open source. And there is also another one, I think, which is uh, to build uh, your uh, status in a way. So when you, for example, when you apply for a job, right? Uh, some some jobs ask, check if you have a GitHub account and check if you uh, have open source projects, if you contribute. And so, uh, showing that uh, you contribute to open source and that, I don't know, your project is successful or if you have an, uh, many closed PRs uh, on successful projects uh, will make you stand up, stand out, I think, with respect to the other candidates. Yeah, definitely. Um, as a personal experience, every job that I have had so far, uh, everyone reached me out because of my GitHub profile. Because I can basically reference that 
I can write Rust, I can uh, build certain things. So it's a great reference. Otherwise, I would have to deal with, you know, uh, proving myself to them. Although almost every company wants me to write some sim something simple, get game mm -hmm. a challenge. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's another discussion. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, uh, definitely, yes. So cool. Now, um, I'd like to talk about um, open source uh, sustainability. So first question I have for you is, uh, uh, I, how, in general, how do you see living off by just doing open source today? How hard is it? And I mean, not, 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 not for you especially, but say somebody wants to do it, uh, what? I think it is pretty hard. Um, there are a couple of people who manage to do this, but um, they do it in a way that um, their job is actually being an influencer, you know, because having controlling the social media in a way that you are now making money from open source is is very hard. You you need to do more things. Uh, for example, uh, there is faster than Lime, uh, who is now, I think he is living off by open source and um, nothing else. He is creating videos, um, writing blog posts, which is which they are just very long, one hour blog posts about a technical uh, depth of something. So uh, just by writing code and contributing to projects, I think it is something very hard. You need to have a little bit of uh, like an influencer side, you know, try to uh, produce more content outside of open source, but related to open source. Uh, for example, uh, in my current uh, in my current flow, if I still if I keep creating projects, I see that I can get sponsors, uh, but uh, in a way that is not enough. So I am trying to write blog posts you know, share different kinds of information on social media, uh, try to be more active on on these platforms so that I can uh, get more sponsors and just, you know, live off by open source fully. But um, just by creating projects, I think it is very hard. You need to be a part of a community or you need to lead a community or you, you need to be a part of a like a very big open source project and um, in that sense, it could be possible. But the uh, the short answer is, I think it is very hard uh, today. What do you think? Uh, I also think uh, it's it's very hard indeed. And uh, I agree that you should uh, be active on on your socials. You should because both because you can you can reach more people, and uh, like if you reach more people, you're uh, your, you can say that, for example, you you have uh, a, a GitHub sponsor and so on. But at the same time, you can also t talk about, share your project more, and so your your project will become uh, more successful. Also, yeah. Or other like I can think of some exceptions where, like you, you built a, a project that is so good that it's so uh, sent like it's so at the heart of the of an ecosystem that companies will sponsor you and so on, but it's I can think really a few exceptions, yeah. Other people that I know that live by open source, they, they have a social media presence, yes. Yeah, and uh, I, I remember there, there are a couple of projects which, uh, which got pretty big pretty quickly in the open source communities, but um, actually turning them into something profitable is a whole different story even though you have you have built something at the very heart of uh, ecosystem that that will require some work to actually turn it into a product you know you need to uh, turn a project into product to sell it or get sponsors it is just something it, it, it is something else so mm -hmm. um yeah that's why it is very hard. Do you have any plan to 
make to turn some of your open source projects, such as I don't know, Gitcliff, into a product? Yeah, um, especially Gitcliff. I am, I am planning to build something uh, that is related to it, and uh, I'd like to monetize it in a way that I am comfortable, because I, of course, I still want it to be open source, but um, there are some things that you can do at that point. You can close source, you can have a closed source uh, version of it where you have some other features or something. Um, you can make it freemium. Uh, you can, I don't know. There are a couple of ways, I would say. So yeah, definitely about Gitcliff, I'm planning some things, but I still have to sit down and write the code for, for this. And I didn't really have the time yet. So yeah. I see. And yeah, apart from monetizing, uh, try to monetize your, uh, your projects, I think you are on GitHub sponsors, buy me a coffee and Patreon. Yeah, for sure people can donate you to, uh, in other ways also. But what, what are the platforms that uh, you suggest developers to be if, uh, if they want to start uh, this, this path? Um. I would say uh, GitHub sponsors is uh, is the way to go because everything you build will be on GitHub mostly. Um, if you if you don't insist on like using GitLab or uh, what was the other thing, Source Hut, that was one other thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I don't remember its name. Um, Source yeah. Source Forge. Something like that? No, no, no. It was, it was, okay. <laughs> it has a mountain logo or something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember, I'll tell. <clears throat> so, um, I would say GitHub sponsors is pretty good. Uh, especially if you build stuff on GitHub. Uh, if you don't, you can use Patreon. Um, and you can have another one time donation platform like Buy Me a Coffee. Because maybe people don't want to, you know, support you monthly. Maybe it's a one-time thing, so you can have uh, these. You can have these accounts on Buy Me a Coffee. There was one other one, I think, Coffee, K O F F I. I don't know. Yeah, Coldberg. Thank you. Uh, that's something that I was trying to remember. Yeah, which uh, okay. Yeah, it's based on on it's a. It's an hosted GitLab, uh, sorry, GitA, GT. I don't know how do you pronounce it, yeah. yeah Which is yeah. the open source, uh, it's GitHub, but open source, let's say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what nice, but, Yeah, I, I have a question. So, uh, for example, I have set up uh, GitHub sponsor. Do you suggest me to also do um, buy me a coffee or Patreon? So you said buy me a coffee for one time donation, but but people can also do one-time donation on, on GitHub sponsor. So do you suggest to, to also set up these other platforms? Yeah, um, not Patreon, but uh, because I mean, if you have GitHub sponsors, then there's no, I think there's no need to pay, have a Patreon account, but um, definitely uh, buy me a coffee because uh, not everyone has a GitHub account. Mm. And maybe they just solve your project and they they are not active on GitHub, and they just want to give you, you know, help you a little bit. So uh, having those one-time options would be nice. Um, the the reason why I have Patreon and GitHub sponsors is that back then, uh, like three years ago, GitHub uh, sponsors were not supported in my country, so I had to use Patreon, and then it got enabled. And now I have these two options. And uh, I had sponsors on, I have patrons on Patreon. I had to tell everyone to not, like, they, they, I have now, now this GitHub sponsors, maybe you want to switch to that. So some people switched. Some people are still supporting me on Patreon. Um, shout out to them. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, Patreon uh, also has a fee which is higher than uh, GitHub. So for example, if I give you five 
dollars per month, you you receive less than than that. Instead, GitHub sponsors has I think very low fees. I don't, I don't know if it's zero, but yeah, it's definitely less than uh, Patreon. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you for the tip. I will probably I will create a buy me a coffee. Thank you. And so I have. Uh, I think it's the last question regard, regarding uh, uh, economical uh, aspect of uh, open source. Uh, this question comes from Roy again, from asked on Twitter. Uh, so he says, most people I know in software engineering, at least in India, are solely focus, focused on making money. I would say also in Italy, so, so it's not an India thing. How do you handle this temptation and, and keep working on open source? How do you keep motivation to contribute? It's a pretty good question. Thanks, Roy. Um, so it's it's the same here in Turkey as well. Um, you have this temptation. You you have these skills. Why not go apply for a big company, get fat paychecks, and just live your life as you like? Why not do that, right? But the problem is. When you do that, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. If I do that, I don't really enjoy what I do. And I don't want to uh, work on something that I don't directly see the effect of it. For example, when you go, when you work for a company and um, you are doing something that is, so let's say you, you like Rust, right? You work for a company who writes uh, Go, then that's a problem you don't really enjoy uh, writing Go, right? You go another company, you you write Rust this time, but you build a uh, cryptocurrency. Now that's that's something uh, that I don't I don't like as well. So yeah, if I had the option to build what I like and get money, then I would just jump right into it but um sadly i didn't have any options and it's really hard to find companies like that where you enjoy what you build and uh you know get get uh, you know earn good money so yeah that's something that is i always consider and um as i always say i learn a lot of things by doing open source and writing uh, Rust, and you know, getting feedback from people, and I, I overall like the community efforts. So, um, if it is possible for me to uh, keep living like this and uh, not have financial problems, uh, I would take this shot and you know, try my best to do it. But yeah, um, I know that it is often said that if you don't make money from something, then it is. Uh, quote unquote pointless, but that's not the point uh, when you're doing open source. So yeah, I hope this was um, motivational enough. <laughs> I don't know what was the yeah, other. Yeah, but uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the question was uh, how do you handle this tempt temptation and keep working on open source? How do you keep motivation to contribute? Yeah, I think you you answered it. you answered it pretty well. But like, I think that even if you find a job you like, and I'm speaking about you. Or I think that even if you join a company that you like and so on, I think you you will still contribute to you will still maintain all your uh, open source projects. Uh, I guess because yeah, the, yeah, the company so... that I was the, this uh, company in question would be probably about maintaining open source projects. So by default, if I if this imaginary company exists, then I would be still doing open source. You know, okay, but getting, it's, getting paid maybe, maybe you do the open source projects of the company, not not yours. You, you don't have yeah. a chance maybe to work on help uh, um, and the other, for example, minor projects. So, um, like for example, you have friends that um, work on on something full day, and then after the day, they work on other paid work instead of doing um, open source, right? So I think the, maybe this is what uh, what you mean also. I don't know. 
So like, say, so if you had the chance to work on Rust, you, you wouldn't also do uh, Rust open source projects? I don't know. I would probably write Zig if I come if over to Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, okay. So you, you use open source as a way to basically to learn uh, new things um, and have yeah. fun. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly. a great, uh, that's, that's a great uh, way of seeing it. I agree. Um, yeah, the, the, like I, I, um, I, I write, uh, like it's now it's three, speaking about myself, it's three years that, or more, I think, yeah, three years that I, I write Rust at my, my full-time job, but I find the motivation to contribute to open source because I also want to see other projects succeed, like for example, mine or um, other projects I care about. And so I contribute to them because I want to succeed and also, yeah, to uh, take breaks, to do, to work on something else. Because uh, like the thing about having your own project is that you are the only person in charge of it. And so you need to do uh, like documentation, uh, developer advocacy, um, you decide your deadlines. So you are in full control and it's really li liberating, right? If you say, okay, for one week, I want to work on uh, addressing uh, technical debt. Uh, I want to uh, work on this useful feature nobody uh, wants, but I find, I find it funny. So I think that, yeah, working on open source, uh, as you said, it's, it's fun and uh, lets you learn a lot. Yeah. And I also, uh, as I said before, right, I, I don't see, like, I think there is an indirect direct direction between uh, working on open source and money, right? Because maybe you have a great open source library, a company uh, notice it, and they offer a job that pays double as you were earning before. I think that uh, it, some, uh, yeah, as you said, all the companies you worked for, you worked with, uh, they reached out because of your open source project. So mm, it's not a total, uh, they're not at the opposite of open source and money, for sure. Uh, short term, it's easy to make money by uh, taking other contract work, for example. Uh, but yeah, in the long term, I think that uh, open source can pay off also. Yeah, totally agree. And so related to this, uh, in your blog, which I suggest everyone to check out, it's great. You, there was a, an article I found interesting about open source green set, grant set. And you defined the uh, open source grant set as the act of contributing to open source, regardless of the circumstances and ignore, ignoring the, modi the motivating outside factors until eventually making a living of it. Um, do you want to tell something uh, about this mindset? Yeah, wow, that was, I, I don't quite remember um, what was the definition, but that was impressive. Uh, <laughs> there are so, your words. Yeah, it's a bit hardcore, but uh, okay. Um, so the thing that I was trying to say there uh, was uh, contributing to open source, having this mindset, having this grind set is about, um, learning as much as you can and taking your time to follow the rabbit holes that you come across. So for example, you are working on some problem and you are working on this open source project and um, you see that something isn't working. You research that topic and you realize there is a whole different area and in, in normal, uh, in normal workflows, you just focus on this problem, right? And um, you you don't want to deviate too much. You don't want to derail from from that. You just want to solve this problem. But in this open source, source grind set, what I mean is you follow this path, you you follow the rabbit hole, 
you go to the uh, source of the problem, source of the issue. Uh, and maybe this is a very low level li library that is laying around on GitHub. You go there, you read the code, you try to understand what's wrong, you check out the issues and eventually contributing to this library, this little thing that is not even maybe directly related to your project. So uh, this is what I mean by the grind set. It is for, um, it is basically for not caring about the, the current things that you need to do, just following the open source path, you know. Uh, so if it requires for you to write C, just go and contribute to some C project. And um, this way you, you simply become uh, like a, like an open source person who is just contributing to a, a lot of projects. And this is actually what I do. Um, I, if I come across some, some problem, I try to understand what's wrong and I just go and go there and contribute to another project if necessary. And I think this is very important in the community because uh, someone else will eventually come across this issue as well and someone will fix it why not it's you right so that was the uh that was the uh, summary of it i think it, it's a long blog post yeah. you can go and read you made it. also some examples about some of these rabbit holes you went through i think that going through these rabbit holes is the best way you can learn something new especially yeah. in computer science probably like yeah. going trying to understand everything understand a problem fully don't just stop at the abstraction of your framework and going until the end yeah it's it's a it's a great it's a great mindset it's a great grind set i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, i let's also talk about the the other elephant in the room apart from the money which is the commitment right that you need to do especially to uh maintain all this these projects, right? Uh, in general, what, how do you handle burnout and uh, how do you keep up with it? <laughs> um, it's a great question. And I was thinking of writing the sequel for the open source grind set series, which was supposed to be about the burnout part of it, because imagine you follow every rabbit hole, you, you, you know, contribute to everything and it just keeps going it is very overwhelming and it can just uh, result in a burnout so uh, it's important to uh, develop some tricks uh, personal tricks to handle those situations for me I would um, if I feel like I've been I've been burnt burnt out I would get distant from the things that I do for a while uh, you know shut myself off a little bit and try to think about something else and do something else, maybe travel, um, maybe going to somewhere else helps. Um, doing something, uh, so even though you burnt out, maybe you still want to do things and doing nothing is not an option. So in those cases, I do something else uh, completely different from uh, writing code. Uh, for example, making music is a great way for me to handle with burnout and as such. Uh, and if you if you really feel like you're not feeling like uh, you you cannot do anything, then just do it, do nothing. You know, just give yourself some some time. Um, don't don't get too attached to what you do. Uh, try to put some distance between you and this thing, and um, and yeah, just uh, spend some time in your personal life. That usually helps for me, but it can change for from people to people. And um, yeah, you need to find the best way to cope with it. I think. How Absolutely. do you handle handle yeah. that? Uh, I I use the same trick as you. Uh, if something, if I don't, if I feel stressed about working on something, I try to do something else. Maybe if I want to keep coding, I start a new project. I work on on something else, and uh, yeah, just 
I, I remember that nobody pays me for for maintaining my my software. Uh, yeah, so it's very important. Yeah, I, 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 the important thing is communicating it. So let's say that uh, one person uh, finds wants a new feature. Um, you 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 say if you don't have the energy to work on it in that moment, you say yeah, uh, I like your approach. If PR is welcome, right? If you want to work on it, you you can make it you can make it happen. I will I will be happy to to review it. Yes, so definitely um, doing something else and keep your distance from the uh, things that stress you. Uh, it's uh, it's a good thing. Yeah, in general, how do you do you keep up with the like the noise coming from from your from your open source projects, right? People that open issues, uh, feature requests, uh, um, everything. Yeah. So um, let me give an example of that. If you if you have a Rust project and if you integrated one of the uh, dependency auto bump bots in your repo, for example, the Panda bot or uh, Renovate, you will you will get daily PRs for, for um, Saturday, Saturday JSON and Clap. So um, th those three are just they have they have very frequent releases with uh, minimal features and they usually patch releases. And every day I wake up, go check my emails, and I have like 15 PRs from these bots, three comments on different projects issues, two PRs on whatever. And um, this is just very overwhelming if you uh, if you look from the outside. But um, I, I usually uh, in those situations, I usually take things step by step. Uh, for example, I don't, uh, I, I break it down for myself. So if I want to work on this specific project, I only want to work, just focus on that. You know, I don't want to uh, get distracted on the other stuff that I need to be doing. So uh, I set my goal as to finish on working on my own, on, on the project that I want. And it's the it's actually a good thing that you have uh, different options because working on the same project uh, can be boring after some time, and it's a it's a different way to look at look at it. But um, yeah, I just uh, set my focus on something and try to stick to that and follow the rabbit rabbit holes on that project, not on the other ones, to not get distracted. But yeah, um, it is sometimes really, uh, really hard to keep up with things, especially when you have uh, different projects that you are uh, watching. So yeah. I can imagine. So you mentioned that you set goals. Uh, I'm curious, how, how, how do you set goals? Um, how often, for how long? Like, what's the scope of the goals? Um, the scope is basically, if I if there's a um, pull request that needs review from me. From me, uh, I set my goal to first do that and not get really distracted. And if it takes one hour, it's fine. If it takes ten minutes, it's fine. I just want to finish that first. So that's that's my goal. It's not like very long term something, but it's just something that okay. uh, I want to focus. But yes. like for example on. On Monday, you set the goals for your week, or at the start of your day, you set the goals for your day. No, no, uh, just, you just choose a task and you decide to focus on it. Yeah, avoid any other distractions. Uh, yeah. I see distractions. Uh, yeah, definitely. Also, you mentioned uh, like the, the panda bot. Um, I have a, another advice to avoid the, uh, being stressed, which is automate as much as possible. So, for example, for the Panda bot, well, it's uh, you need to first build a test suite that you trust, right? And so, when when you receive a dependent bot PR that up updates a library, and your test pass, 
you should be 99% confident that um, it's okay to merge that PR, right? And so uh, I have a, a bot that automatically merges the Panda bot PRs if all the CI is green. So, and also in my projects, of course, like I have automatic releases. So definitely uh, I suggest to avoid at all cost manual tasks, repetitive tasks, stuff that is not fun. Otherwise you, you, you don't do uh, fun stuff. And personally, I find automating stuff in general funny. So it also gives me joy, joy to find uh, solutions to, to these pro problems, yes. So last question regarding mm, burnout in general. Um, is there any trick you use to balance uh, your personal life with uh, work and uh, open source? So I don't know, you, you set time limits to uh, your open source work uh, per week, uh, I don't know. Um, actually, my personal life and work slash open source is a bit intertwined with each other. But um, something that I developed recently is I I now have friends outside of the the software world, which really helps um, because when you when you just want to you know when you burn burn out burnt out. You don't want to like discuss uh, your Vim config with your friends, right? <laughs> so um, I now have uh, like I, I expanded my circle a li little bit, and I now have uh, more. I don't want to say normal, more uh, outside of software people that I know, which really helps. Like I can talk about some other things, and um, you know have fun with them. So that's um, that's how I balance it out right now. But as I said earlier, um, doing something different, uh, for example, making music is also mm. very helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, do you, if I want to keep my friends, you don't advise me to discuss Vim config with them. Okay, I will keep that yeah, in we mind. Can, yeah, we can discuss Neo Vim config though. <laughs> okay, that would be nice. Makes sense. Yes.